Hey, everybody. Welcome to my live. I'm going to go in depth today about the secret to success. Um, I've been doing a lot of studying the last few weeks. I've been especially inspired because of Bob Proctor and hanging out with him. And he's challenged me to think beyond what I've already been thinking. So I'm going to just lay it out for you guys today in a very like easy to understand way. So everybody wants to know what the secret to success is. Everyone always thinks that there's a secret and there is kind of a secret. It's very, very interesting when, when we break it down. So I'm gonna break it down into five steps. Um, where I'm getting my information from, these books right here, if you wanna read them, I'm gonna point out a couple chapters to just point to if you wanna get the full version, because obviously I'm not gonna do the whole thing here because it would take a long time. Um, if you're reading Think and Grow Rich, I want you to skip to chapter 12. Chapter 12, if you have this copy, it's page 227. The subconscious mind, okay? That chapter right here, we're gonna talk about The Strangest Secret by Earl Nightingale is very short, so just read the whole thing. I have a couple bookmarks here because I'm gonna point out a few things in this book. And then Financial Success Through Creative Thought, Wallace D. Waddles. This is the book that Bob Proctor gave me from his original library. Um, he told me to read three chapters over and over again, and that was inscribed right here and that's chapters 4, 14, and 7. And he said to read them in that order. So chapter 4 um, is a very interesting chapter, which is the first principle in the science of getting rich. It talks about how thought is all that the universe is made up of. <laughs> it's pretty heavy stuff. So if this is your first time hearing this stuff, <laughs> go to that chapter. It'll blow your mind, okay? Um, but basically, we live in a thought world we live in a thought universe so that's what chapter four is all about and you guys see my little um this is my card that i made here i showed you guys this on my facebook wall yesterday it says i'm a best-selling world-renowned author and teacher five million copies sold world change that's my goal that's my next goal okay um i have my name written with uh, at the bottom of napoleon hill earl nightingale bob proctor and then my name there this is what i'm manifesting currently i don't know how i'm going to do it I just know I'm going to do it. On the back is the Sermon on the Mount. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened for you. And the reason I did that is because in this book here, on the very uh, end of it, it talks about for 30 days what you need to do. And it gives you specific instructions on what to do if you want to manifest something into your life. So I'm following it because the reason I'm following this is because Bob Proctor, um, when he was a young guy i think he said he was uh 26 27 something like that right around josh's age maybe he's 28 and his life was going nowhere <laughs> he is a high school dropout in fact he said the his high school asked him just to not come back he didn't do his homework he was flunking out total screw up that was his original story right he started uh listening well let me back up in 1961 i might be a little bit wrong uh, a good friend gave him this book, Think and Grow Rich. He has an original copy that's all busted up. It looks more like this. The binding's all falling off of it. And this book started to change his life. But fast forward to um, when he got a hold of this book, okay, he actually listened to the audio of it on repeat over and over and over and over again. Now, he said this was illogical and people were not doing this at the time. People don't do that now. So because he listened to this book over and over again, I listened to this book. Actually, I've been reading this book. And because he told me to read these three chapters, I'm doing that too. So um, there's, uh, I don't know if you guys know the story behind Think and Grow Rich. So before I go into my lesson today, I'm just going to break that down really quick. Do you guys know what this book is? Do you even know what this is all about? Do you know who Napoleon Hill is? Napoleon Hill is uh, was a reporter back in the day, okay? 1937, I believe, is when this book came out. But before then, there was a man called Andrew Carnegie. Andrew Carnegie was a steel uh, magnet at the time. He was um, a very wealthy man, and he was looking for the right person to work with that would interview over 500 successful people and develop a 
formula for success. That's how this book came about. This is the formula for success. Napoleon Hill interviewed over 500 people at the time. Thomas Edison um, was in this book as well. Hundreds of uh, people he interviewed, and he came up with these chapters here. And why Andrew Carnegie chose Napoleon Hill, he approached him and said, first of all, I think he had over 200 interviews with other people. And immediately after meeting each of these people, he said, no, you're not the right guy. Within 30 seconds, he would decide, or he would give the person a minute to decide if he was going to work with them or not. And every person that he met with, he said no, until he met Napoleon Hill. And the reason why most people he turned down was because he said, I want you to work for 20 years for free so that you can develop this book. I want you to work for 20 years for free, but the things that you're going to learn out of creating this formula, the success formula, is going to change your life forever. Now, of course, fast forward to today, we all know who Napoleon Hill is. He became wealthy beyond you know, his worth, right, because of the Napoleon Hill Foundation and everything like that. Um, so he interviewed the greatest thought leaders of the time. And this created the success formula. So I'm going to talk about that um, today. And I'm going to break it down into five steps that I feel like are the most important, especially if you're brand new to this, you never heard about any of this before. I'm going to just say a few things that are going to put this into your awareness so that you guys can take control of your life and have all the success that you want. Now, the definition of success, according to this book right here, is doing what you intentionally do want to do. How simple is that? If your intention is to become a school teacher and that is all you want to do, that is your love, your passion, that's all you want to do, if that's what you're currently doing, you're success you are successful, okay? It doesn't mean that you're wealthy necessarily. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're successful. We confuse that a lot. We think we automatically think that success has something to do with money. It doesn't. Success by definition is just doing that which you intentionally want to do. Most people do not do what they intentionally want to do because they don't believe that they have the power to do what they intentionally want to do. So let me get my whiteboard. <laughs> we are going to go to school today. <laughs> All right, here we go. The subconscious mind, we're going to talk about that. But before that, can you guys see this far? All right. The secret to success. My handwriting is sloppy. Oh, look at that. It's way up there. Let's try that again. Blood. I was going to have this tilted more this way, but then my freaking light shows up in the thing, so it has to be tilted. All right. We're just going to try it. Let's see if this works. Success. <laughs> I spelled it wrong. Bam, that's an E. I was thinking of two words at the same time. Success. You can read that, right? Okay. The title of this video is The Secret to Success. You guys get the point. Number one is we live in a thought world. So I'm going to type this. Infinite intelligence. This is what some people confuse for God, uh, energy, whatever you want to call it, uh, infinite intelligence, formless substance, original substance. This blew my mind when I was studying this. Um, before I um, decided to open my mind to these concepts, I was an atheist, and I just automatically said, this: none of this is going to be true. And once I got over myself and realized that there might be something bigger out there and the universe doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So maybe I'll start studying this. Now, chapter four, this is the first principle in this book right here. The first principle in the science of getting rich. I'm going to read just a couple things. We are going to school today. So, yes, I have to read a few things to you guys. No, I didn't memorize it because I'm not like that much of a genius. So I just I learned from books. Okay. <laughs> Thought is the only power which can produce tangible riches from the formless substance. The stuff from which all things are made is a substance which thinks, and the thought of form in this substance produces the form. Is that confusing? Basically, it's talking about this. There's an infinite intelligence out there, okay? 
original substance moves according to its thoughts. Every form and process you see in nature is the visible expression of a thought and original substance. Okay, that sounds crazy. However, we live in a thought world, which is part of a thought universe. This goes on. This goes on to talk about how the planets are all in a system that maintains that form. Now, if you guys look at, you know, through a Hubble telescope, we'll be able to see what the planets look like. We'll get to see what uh, the moon looks like. When you back it all up from far away, all you see is a bunch of swirls of particles moving around like the Milky Way, whatever. That's basically our universe at large. We don't know very much about our universe other than there's stars, planets, there's a sun, there's a few suns, I don't know. Um, there's moons. We don't understand why all that is there. I'm here to tell you, according to this book right here, which I faithful believe in because it's changed my life, um, that we live in a thought universe. Okay? So let me go into a little bit more detail on that. I'm trying to stay with me. This is going to be some deep stuff today. The thought of a moving universe extended throughout formless substance and the thinking stuff moving according to that thought took the form of systems of planets and maintains that form. Thinking substance takes the form of its thought and moves according to the thought. Holding the idea of a circling system of suns and worlds, it takes the form of these bodies and it moves them as it thinks. We have a conscious universe. The universe is conscious. We are all a part of that thinking stuff. Man is a thinking center. That's another point that I'm going to make later on. Okay. Thinking the form of a slow-growing oak tree, it moves accordingly. It produces the tree, though centuries may be required to do the work. In creating, the formless seems to move according to the lines of motion it has established. The thought of an oak tree does not cause the instant formation of a full-grown tree, but it does start in motion the forces which will produce the tree along established lines of growth. Every thought of form held in thinking substance causes the creation of the form, but always or at least generally along the lines of growth and action already established. Okay, so what it's saying is we are the creators of our universe. We are the creators of everything that you see around us, okay? Humans, and I know you don't wanna hear that. Some of you guys are like, no, nope, God is the universe. You know, God is the creator, great. That's, that gets confusing because people have been programmed to think in certain lines of what their church says. I'm trying to think beyond that. So if you can stay with me, no thought of form can be impressed upon original substance without causing the creation of the form. Okay, so that's number one. Number one is there's an infinite intelligence. There is thought stuff. <laughs> there's thinking stuff, formless stuff. Formless substance thinks, and original substance moves according to the thoughts. Now, your subconscious mind works voluntarily. It works involuntarily at times as well, okay? It's just what's impressed upon us. That's what we're thinking. So your subconscious mind, you may feel like, has no control. But it does. Everything that we're doing, whether it's intentional or not, is because of our thoughts. Everything that we're experiencing is because of our thoughts, okay? So I've made that point clear, hopefully. Number one, we live in a thought universe. The first thing that you need to know, thought universe. All right, number two, here we go. We're gonna move on to number two. I wonder if I can sit down and write this. Man is a thinking center. It's amazing how little we know about ourselves. Man is a thinking center. Man and woman, okay, don't get crazy with that whole he, she stuff. I'm just saying in general terms here, okay? <laughs> Man can originate thought. Man has confined his efforts to the work of his hands, though, and never on trying to cause the creation itself. So now we're going to move into the power that we actually have, okay? I'm going to reference this because 
There's no other better way of saying it besides just showing you guys what it says here. And I'm skipping around a lot to make my point short and sweet. I'm not going to read the whole book to you. <laughs> I've just gathered a few things that really make sense, okay? Man is a thinking center and can originate thought. All the forms that man fashions with his hands must first exist in his thought. He cannot shape a thing until he's thought that thing. Now, this is the part that tripped me out, okay? Right here. And so far, man has confined his efforts wholly to the work of his hands and has applied manual labor to the world of forms, seeking to change or modify things that are already in existence. So these are all things in existence. These books are in existence already, right? This pen is already in existence. So we may think to ourselves, I can see this pen, and since it's already here, I can use it to write with. But have we thought much about how to create something out of nothing? We can create something out of nothing if you use your imagination <laughs> and you have the belief, you move the doubt and worry and all that stuff. He has never thought of trying to cause the creation of new forms by impressing his thoughts upon the formless substance. Okay, so the formless substance or the infinite intelligence, if man's a thinking center, he can use his thoughts to create. Okay, man becomes the creator. But most men don't understand this. Humans don't understand this because we are told that we're not Because we're told that we're not we agree and we just assume that that's what it is Those are old paradigms, which I'll be getting to next When man has a thought form he takes material from the forms of nature and makes an image in the form which is in his mind Whenever you're thinking of something that you want to create. It's always an image. It's always a picture. You're not thinking in words <laughs> Okay, you're not Words don't translate. You're thinking in images. And the reason why you're thinking in images is because it is in your mind to be able to create. You're, you have the ability to create out of the formless substance, out of this thought universe. He has so far made little to no effort to cooperate with formless intelligence, to work with the Father. Now, I'm referencing the Bible in this, okay, so that you guys can tie it all together. Um... But he has not dreamed of what he can do, what he seeth the Father doing. Man reshapes and modifies existing forms by manual labor, but is given no attention to the question whether he may not produce things from the form of substance by communicating his thoughts to it. Now, this is very important to understand, because if you want to change something in your life, you have to understand that you have the power to do that. You have to understand that you have the ability to change the thoughts within your mind, your, use your imagination to change what you are already witnessing. To think, oh, now I'm going to go to this book here. Oh, no, no, I lied. Sorry, I'm getting messed up here. To think what you want to think is to think truth regardless of appearances. So this brings me to something that I posted um, a few days ago. It was a little longer than a few days ago. But this is, um, how do I say this? I, I said this on my last live, but basically when people are witnessing things in their life, they're witnessing disease or bad health. They're witnessing uh, pro poverty in their awareness right now, in their experience. They're experiencing um, uh anything negative that's happening in their life. Maybe their husband wants to leave them. Maybe their kids are acting up. Maybe all these things are happening in their life, negative things that are happening in their life, right? And that's the appearance of what they're seeing. That's their current uh, experience. So this is where it gets interesting. Now that we know that there's a thought universe, we all live in this formless substance, right? And we know that man's a thinking center, and he controls his thoughts. He can control his thoughts. Most men don't control their thoughts. They don't know that they can, so they don't. But here is the difference between what the truth is and what the appearance of what you think the truth is. This, if you can understand this, you can create anything you want, okay? And I'm going to read this little section to you here. 
all successful people do things in a certain way and it first starts with their thoughts okay to think what you want to think is to think truth regardless of appearance every man has the natural and inherent power to think what he wants to think but it requires far more effort to do so than it does to think the thoughts which are suggested by appearances it's way easier not to think it's way easier to go with the flow to plug into society in fact i read this um thing in here real quick i'll read it and it says the um, hold on, please hold. Where did I write it down? I'll just tell you what it says. But, oh, but I want to read it directly. Hold on. Please hold. You guys are just going to stay here, right? Okay. Oh, here it is. <laughs> Found it. Sorry. Okay. Rollo May, the distinguished psychiatrist, wrote a wonderful book called The Man's Search for Himself. The opposite of courage in our society is not cowardice. It's conformity. The opposite of courage is conformity. So the reason why so many people are not living their life intentionally is because they live in a society that's already made up for them. So your schools, your doctors, your um, the, the whole educational system, the government, everything's been already predetermined. And so we think that's what is. And because we are in the appearance of what is, you see, the media is, first of all, owned by 70% of pharmaceutical companies. You can do your own, draw your own conclusions there. Okay. But the fact that we have media, the fact that we have TV programming should tell you right there that all these things are being suggested to us by appearances. If the news is showing you just a select few stories and telling you guys like, oh, this is what's happening. Another shooting is happening. Another mass shooting over here. Um, this gay rights over here. Um, I don't know, like all the stuff that's craziness always on the news, okay? These are selected stories so that it can manipulate your thinking. They are shown to you for a reason so that your mind can be manipulated. It's there for a reason, because those in power that know this information, that have this secret information, use it for nefarious reasons, okay? And they create the appearance of what is so that everybody feels hopeless and trapped in this system that's been established for us. Now that I've said that, I want you to listen to this part because this is a big, big key right here, okay? Here we go. To think according to appearances is easy. But before I read that, I want to go back and read that one part one more time so you guys really hear this. Every man has a natural inherent power to think what he wants to think, but it requires far more effort to do so than it does to think the thoughts which are suggested by appearances. To think according to appearances is easy. To think truth regardless of appearances is laborious and requires the expenditure of more power than any other work man has called upon to perform. That means it's easy to witness your experience and say, this is what's happening. This is my circumstance. This is the truth. Don't you see? It's right here. You wrote on this board. That's what I'm witnessing. That's what I see. That must be true. False. What's true is what you want to be true. Whatever you're thinking and whatever you're creating is actually the truth. That's the truth. So if in your mind you are a multimillionaire, you live the life of luxury, you have everything that you want, you have the car you want, you are empowering many people, you're, you're doing all the things that you said you were going to do when you were young that you somehow forgot along the way, that is the truth. You just have to accept it. Okay? There is no labor from which most people shrink as they do from that of sustaining consecutive thought. It is the hardest work in the world. It is so hard to convince somebody that they are wealthy when they are experiencing poverty. Every single person watching this video right now, you guys are wealthy. You're already wealthy. You're already successful in your network marketing business or in your traditional business or in your job. You're already successful. You already have the things that you want. Everything is already here. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It's already here. 
You have to become a vibrational match to the things that you wish to attract into your life. In order for those things to gravitate towards you in your life, you have to accept them as if they are already here. That's hard to do for most people because they are so ingrained to believe that what they're witnessing is the truth. This is not the truth. The truth is whatever you decide it to be. Okay? Every appearance in the visible world tends to produce a corresponding form in the mind which observes it. And this can only be prevented by holding the thought of the truth. Here is the key to this point that I'm trying to make. Man, the thinking center. To look upon the appearance of disease will produce the form of disease in your own mind and ultimately in your body unless you hold the thought of the truth, which is that there is no disease. It is only an appearance and the reality is health. To look upon the appearances of poverty will produce corresponding forms in your own mind unless you hold to the truth that there is no poverty, there is only abundance. To think health when surrounded by the appearance of disease or to think riches when in the midst of appearance of poverty requires power. But he who acquires his power becomes a mastermind. He can conquer fate. He can have what he wants. This power can only be acquired by getting hold of the basic fact which is behind all appearances and that fact that there is one thinking substance from which and by which all things are made, then we must grasp the truth that every thought held in this substance becomes a form and that man can so impress his thoughts from it as to cause them to take form and become visible things. You guys hear that? If you are experiencing disease, if you're experiencing poverty, if you're experiencing something negative into your life right now, just know that those are the appearance of those things and the truth is the opposite. Because the truth is whatever you accept to be true. Truth is a perspective based on whatever you agree to. Reality is in the mind of the beholder, or, or reality is perception, right? Truth is in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> there we go, that's how it goes. Now, how do we get past the appearances? Now, some of you guys are like, Jen, you're going crazy right now. You're saying stuff that I, I don't know if I can understand, <laughs> but we're gonna get there. Number three leads me to my next point here. Changing old programming. Or old paradigms. We have to change the programming that's in our mind. Now it says here, in this book here, The Stranger's Secret, page 18, the problem is that our mind comes as standard equipment at birth. It's free. And things that are given to us for free we place little value on. Things we pay money for we value. You have to change the old programming because we're all on a default setting. When you birth at birth, you entered into your family. Now maybe you're you are into um, a certain culture, a certain religion. You know, people that are a certain religion are usually because they were raised that way. Usually because it was put into their awareness. You have people in different countries that have that religion and that culture. You have people all over the world. Now, I heard Bob Proctor say this not long ago. He said, culture is nothing more than group programming. And once you get past that, once you get past the paradigm of that culture, the programming of that culture, everybody's pretty much the same. The issue is that the average person is following the average person and everybody's just going around in circles. <laughs> so how do we change the old programming? Um, AKA witnessing a world and not knowing that we're creating it. How do you change it is by changing your thoughts about those things. Now for me, you guys, I, I was so attached to my story, my negative story. Okay. I, 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 it was my battle cry. My, my husband left me, my dad left me, my, this, my, that, I had all these excuses for why I couldn't make things happen in my life. My past, your past doesn't exist outside of your memory. Just remember that. There's no such thing as your past. It doesn't exist. The only thing that exists is the educational lesson that you learn from it. 
the information that you got from your past is what shaped you into what you are now. Your past is actually what is created your current life experiences and appearances right now. Your past. Your past thinking is what you have right now. So if you're experiencing all these negative things in your life, it's because of your what you've previously done before this moment right now. Does that make sense? Your past doesn't exist outside of your memory. So you can change your past by changing your memories to your past. So instead of saying, I had a bad childhood, I, you know, had uh, a bad, you know, spouse, or this person was treating me wrong, or whatever is happening, that's negative from your past, okay? You have to change the way you feel about it. You have to change your understanding of it. You have to change that programming. I was, li I was thinking about something the other day. You know, people come to my house. <laughs> Not very many people do, but some people do. And um, they see that I leave my butter out. <laughs> I don't put my butter in my refrigerator. And the reason I don't do that is because my grandparents also left their butter out. And I remember as a child going to their house and having the best toast ever. And the reason why the toast was amazing at their house is because they left their butter out. And my mom, who bought the tub of margarine, had cold butter, and her toast sucked because it was cold margarine versus left out butter. So this became part of my programming. Okay, I learned. I learned that behavior. And because I learned it, I, I continue to do it without even realizing it. Bob Proctor uses an example. We don't even think about what we're thinking. When you get dressed in the morning, what leg do you put on first when you put your pants on? Is it always your right leg? Is it always your left leg? It's probably always the same leg every time. It's probably not something different because we're doing that on repeat. We're doing that on programming. Okay? How to change the old programming is to first become aware of it. Now you're aware of it because I've just told you. I've just told you that everything that you've learned up until this point has been programming. The fact that this is called a book is because somebody told you this is called a book. This could actually be called um, a highlighter. <laughs> How do you know what's fact? You don't know. You don't know what anything is. So the first step is to throw out everything that you've ever learned, okay? Throw away your textbooks, <laughs> okay? Throw away any form of programming, anything that you learned as a child, and just start from right now. If you are repeating negative thoughts in your mind right now, many of us are. I can't afford that. Money doesn't grow on trees. I'm going to use my discount <laughs> at the store. I'm going to do whatever. These things that are in our minds over and over, reinforcing these beliefs. Now, that's why we keep experiencing more of what we're experiencing is because we keep thinking about things the same way. And because we keep thinking about things the same way, we keep on creating the same thing over and over again. Do you have a friend in your life that always has something negative happening to them? That's your friend that's full of drama, right? Their friends um, are always having something going on, like always something negative is happening to them. Their kids are always sick. Somebody's dying. Somebody's, you know, lost their job. They're bouncing around from relationship to relationship. You know that friend. If that you don't know that friend, maybe that person's you. I don't know. That person is a victim to their old programming. How do you change it? You change what you're putting in your mind. In order to rewrite the code, because we all come on default setting, okay? We're all like a computer program that you can rewrite. You have to become aware of it, and then you can change it. How you change it is by the thoughts that you're putting into your head and the reinforcement of what is in your awareness. When um, I, I had a... One of my son's friends come over the other day, and um, this person, this kid, kept saying negative things about themselves. And I pointed it out to them in their awareness. I said, you better be careful what you're saying. Because if you keep saying these things, that's what's going to be true. They said, well, every time I go to school, I get bullied. I don't like going to new schools. Um, I'm not very good at that. And they're doing all this negative self-talk. And I'm thinking to myself, where did you learn all these doubts and fears? Probably your parents, I guess. And I called them out on it and I said, um, remember your words are magic spells. And your words have a vibration. 
and so do thoughts. Thoughts and words both have a vibration. And because of that, they are literally magic spells. So what you're speaking, you're speaking your truth, is what you are creating consciously and subconsciously in your awareness. So how to change old paradigms? You have to change the record that's playing on your mind, in your mind. Positive affirmations, that's a good way to change it. Stop listening to the music you're listening to and start listening to this stuff instead, okay? Um, every single one of these books says you have to accept this as truth. You have to accept it as what it is because this has been over on this book. 500 people that were successful got interviewed and they gave us all the information on how to do it. They have to, you have to accept that as the truth, not your negative thoughts and your fears as the truth. Okay, so now number four. So this is changing old paradigms or old, old programming so we can do affirmations. And can I just tell you guys why, why do affirmations matter? It's more than just like saying frivolous, positive words. It's not, it's not just that. The reason why is because if you grew up poor, that's what you're used to okay now that's what was in your awareness so if you came to a house like my house right now you might feel uncomfortable <laughs> i'm just saying because it's not in your awareness you might and, and people come to my house all the time and they feel uncomfortable it's amazing i see people the plumber shows up uh the pool people show up people come over and you can feel that they are uneasy in this house because it's so massive in my mind, I think it's just a house. Like, who cares? It's just a house. Um, but because that's where they started from. Maybe from their crappy apartment, they are now moved up to like a, a lesser crappy apartment, and they're so grateful that that's where they live now because that's better than where they were before, right? Stay with me. The reason why we think that is because that's all we've seen. Affirmations help us change what we are used to hearing, okay? Because if you grew up in a family that always said negative things to you because their parents said negative things to them because the news and the media and everything on TV and their, our educators and our school system is always saying negative things to us, which is reinforcing these beliefs about ourselves, the moment you decide to change that, that tune, change that vibration, at first it sounds crazy it sounds foreign it's uncomfortable it's like going to a massive house like this that you've never seen before that you've never experienced before or going on a vacation and just just enjoying the view because maybe your view in your backyard is just a wall or maybe it's poverty outside or maybe it's on the streets and homelessness whatever it is that you're witnessing to witness something else is going to feel foreign at first it's going to feel uncomfortable but if you say these things enough times, where is it, this way, affirmations help you get comfortable with your new reality. Positive affirmations help you get comfortable with your new reality. If you are overweight and you're aware of this, I use this because it's self-image, or if you're not happy with how you look, maybe your nose is too big, I don't know, maybe your hair is too short, maybe whatever. We pick ourselves apart all the time. None of that even matters because that's your ego doing that, just so you know. Your parents doesn't have crap to do with anything but let's say that you're you have negative self love self um, image right now because that's what you used to seeing you stand in front of the mirror you're still 200 pounds you want to be 150 or whatever your goal is I don't know and you're witnessing that every single day and so that because you're witnessing that every day you're accepting that as the fact you're accepting that as true you guys I just had a baby 16 weeks ago today I'm back to where I started, okay? <laughs> and I'll tell you why. I didn't really change much of what I was eating. I was already kind of eating the way I was already eating when I was pregnant. I ate a lot more when I was pregnant because I was hungry. Um, but when I got into uh, standing in front of the mirror every single day, I saw myself skinny. I saw myself the way that I was before. I didn't see myself as I currently was. I was already jumping ahead to the future of where I wanted to be. and. I gave myself self-love and acceptance, and I was okay with the where I was right now. I was okay with the progress. I was okay with the in-between. I was okay with um, the scale. 
That didn't bother me at all because I knew where I was going. I had it already in my mind where I was going to look like and how I was going to feel and what, what I was going to be like. Positive affirmations change your reality because it gets you comfortable with a new awareness. It gets you comfortable with a new appearance. So in my, I'm going to read some of my own affirmations today. Yes, this is a long training today. If you guys are still here, great. Um, that's good because it's hopefully going to help you guys out. Um, I use the Think Up app. I've talked about this before. It's called Think Up. I have affirmations in here. I have changed them so many times because I've achieved all the things that I had in my affirmations. I keep changing them. Right now, these are my affirmations. And also, this is one of my affirmations, the one I read to you guys earlier. I am in alignment with my divine source energy. I am opening my heart to receive the highest power available to me. I breathe in love. I breathe out everything in me that is not loving. In order to succeed in spirituality, I need to connect with people who wish to achieve the same condition and goal. I want to develop the higher characteristics of the soul, love, connection, and unity in me. These are my affirmations now. My affirmations, because this is something that I'm still currently working on. My affirmations when I was broke was completely different. My affirmations were, I have a successful business. I'm a successful entrepreneur. Um, I am attracting abundance all the time. I'm meeting the right people in my life as I need to meet them. I'm attracting new uh, and talented people into my organization. When we needed a corporate staff, you guys, we didn't have one, okay? We literally grew from 9 million to 100 million in one year and we didn't die. <laughs> like, okay, how do we do that? Josh is a master of this. He can manifest relationships like that. He will say, I need to set, uh, he, he went, we're gonna start a church. I'm not even lying about that. We're starting a church um, because that's the laws of our land. So we're gonna just work with the laws of our land. As President Trump says, when he talks about his bankruptcy, I just use the laws that are available to me. That's what I'm gonna do too, sounds good. Um, he'll say, I need um, I need a, a lawyer that knows how to do a 508. And we call hundreds of lawyers, nobody knows what that is. It's like crazy. And then he will manifest, somebody will call him the next day and say, hey, I'm a lawyer and I do 508. So he'll be like, how did that happen? <laughs> like all the time. He'll say, I'm looking for the best product in this category. And then overnight, it seems like he finds the head person to be able to do that. Do you know something crazy right now in CBD right now, you guys? Most companies have not figured this out. We figured this out. We don't even talk about this. We're able to process unlimited amounts of money in the CBD industry, whereas nobody else in the industry can do it. Why is that? because we are aligned and we know how to manifest those relationships. Josh can manifest his relationships like that. He puts it into his awareness and he intentionally seeks after that. These are affirmations. He had a meeting yesterday. Josh gets exclusive deals all the time in, in our company. And they say, we've never done this before. And he said, that's fine. That's what I'm asking for. And they give it to him all the time. So um, affirmations help us change our reality. It changes, it helps us to stop looking at the appearance of what is and to keep our mind fixated on the future, which is what we are going after right now. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. We're going to go to our next number four, which is decide what you want. Decide and remove doubt. Now I did read this little clip already, but this is number four. Decide what you want to think because it's already yours. All right, energy can't be created or destroyed. It's already there. You just have to get on the same vibrational harmony with it so that you can attract it into your life. It's that simple. Now I'm gonna read something from page 24 here. This, this is the best way to understand it, okay? Now, this is the reason why I did this little piece of paper right here, this 30-day action plan. It's in this book right here, okay? It says to um, write down on a card specifically what it is you want. Make sure it's a single goal and clearly defined. 
you don't need to show it to anybody. I did because I don't care. <laughs> I'm going to show it to you because I'm confident that it's going to happen. Carry it with you so you can look at it several times a day. Think about it in a cheerful, relaxed, positive way each morning when you get up and when you go to bed. Okay? Look at it every chance you get. As you look at it, remember that you must become what you think about. And since you're thinking about your goal, you realize it soon will be yours. In fact, it really it, it it's really yours the moment you write it down and begin to think about it. So all three of these books say that there's a formless substance and infinite intelligence in our universe. Number two says that man's a thinking center and has the ability to originate thought. We can create thought. Things that don't exist yet, we can, we can create, okay? Number three is if you change the old paradigms in your mind that keep replaying in your head over and over again, if you change those with positive affirmations, not just positive, but also the things that you want to create, number four is deciding what you want. Most people are afraid to go after what they want. They're only going after what they think they can get. You have to remove all the doubt, all the worry, all the negative fear and emotion. Stop thinking about what it is that you fear. Each time a fearful or negative thought comes into your mind, replace it with a mental picture of a positive and worthwhile goal. Okay? There will be a time where you want to give up. It happens to every single person that is going through this process. There will be a time that your patience and your your int intestinal fortitude is challenged. But keep thinking positive anyway and know that it's yours. When you order something on Amazon, it shows up in two, three days. You don't think about it. You're not constantly checking your, your order status. You're not wondering where the heck it is all the time. It just shows up, right? When I order Instacart groceries, I don't worry about it. I don't stare at my phone. I just say, I know it shows up. Same thing. The universe is your catalog. It's a thought universe. You think it, you can create it, okay? So you have to decide what you want. If you haven't decided what you want, then you don't know where you're going. Okay? Just as if you were to go on this voyage across the ocean, you would chart out all the stops along. <laughs> There's not gonna be any stops, let's let's be honest, because you're in a boat. But maybe you want to stop on this island or this island, I don't know. But you're gonna chart the course from your starting point to your final destination. Okay? You're gonna chart that out. What most people do is they get in their boat, they start driving. And then they have no destination and they wonder why they're going in circles and they end up on a deserted island. Do you know out of a hundred people, only five people will be success successful? Only five. One person will become wildly successful beyond their wildest dreams. Four of them will be f financially independent. And then everybody else is going to be broke or just getting by out of a hundred people. And that's the reason because people don't decide what they want. They don't, um, they don't think that they can do it. All right, hold on. Oh, another analogy I want to use real quick is page 18 right here. I thought this was very interesting. So we've all heard, as ye sow, ye, so shall ye reap. As you reap what you sow, right? The human mind is much like a farmer's land. The land gives a farmer a choice. He may plant in that land whatever he chooses. The land doesn't care what's planted. It's up to the farmer to make the decision. Your mind, like the land, will return what you plant, but it doesn't care what you plant. Okay, the universe does not care what you ask for. It doesn't care if it's positive, negative, if it's good things happening to you or bad things happening to you. It doesn't feel any way about that at all. Thought universe, no biases. We live in a planet of duality. Both polar sides are happening, negative and positive forces all the time. Everything's in perfect harmony and perfect balance. You say, why do good people get cancer? Why do you know good th bad things happen to good people? Everything's in perfect harmony all the time. Whether that seems wrong or not, that's the way it works. The human mind is just like the land, okay? So if you, if you want to grow, um, let's say, tomatoes, you're going to plant tomato seeds, right? If you want to um, grow nightshade, which is a poison, something negative, and you plant that, that's what's going to grow. You can actually plant them side by side, and they'll both grow. The land does not care. Your mind also doesn't care. Your mind is land. 
you are the farmer. You're not your mind, you're the farmer. You're able to plant what you want to see grow. Does that make sense? Okay. The human mind is far more fertile, far more incredible and mysterious than land, but it works the same way. All right. So you guys have to be conscious of what you're planting. You have to decide what you're going to plant. Book name, The Stranger Secret, Earl Nightingale. Bob Proctor worked with Earl Nightingale. I work with Bob Proctor. I do. I'm speaking that into existence. All right. So I want you guys to really think about this step. Remove all the doubt, worry, any negative thing that comes into your mind. Because remember that doubt, worry, fear, these are all creations as well. They're negative creations. It's planting poison. Doubt, fear, worry is planting nightshade. Planting faith, hope, love, um, success. Those are all planting positive things, okay? Number five, this is where most people miss the mark, where we have been able to figure this out, though. Service to others. Some of us aren't going to like that part because we got so excited thinking about all the things we're going to create for ourselves, and now we have to think about other somebody else. We're going to think about other people now. All right. But it's true. I could not have built HempWorks without becoming uh, in service to other people. It wouldn't have worked. If I just focused on myself, nobody would have joined me. I focus on other people, everybody joins me. It's just the way it is. All right? So now we're going to read page number uh, 24, just at the bottom here. Your success will always be measured by the quality and quantity of service you render. Most people will tell you that they want to make more money without understanding this law. Success is not the result of making money. Earning money is a result of success, and success is in the direct proportion to our service. Most people have this law backwards. It's like the man who stands in front of the stove and says to it, give me heat, and then I'll add the wood. How many men and women do you know, or do you suppose there are today, who take the same attitude towards life? There are millions. You've got to put the fuel in before we can expect heat. Likewise, we've got to be of service first before we can expect money. You can't get money out of your network marketing business if you haven't committed to becoming in service to other people. That's it. Okay, be of service. Don't concern yourself with the money. Be of service, build, work, dream, create. Do this and you'll find that there's no limit to the prosperity and abundance that will come to you. All right. That also goes hand in hand with gratitude. Gratitude is chapter seven, which is the third chapter that Bob Proctor told me to read. And the reason why we have to have gratitude, which I didn't write that down, but I have it in service to others, okay? But the reason why gratitude is so powerful is because it puts us in vibrational harmony with the creative thought universe. It puts us in harmony with the things that we are trying to attract and manifest in our life. So you guys want to know how to be success successful. Why do I have such a hard time saying that word? You want to know how to be successful? There we go. This is the secret right here. You can read all of these books, and this is what they all have in common. Gratitude puts you in vibrational alignment with the things that you are manifesting in your life. If you're sitting here thinking, oh, I don't have this, I don't have that yet, you're out of alignment, which is why you'll never get it, because you're spending all this time feeling bad. Your thoughts create things. Your, your thoughts create feelings. Your feelings create a vibration. That vibration creates and manifests the things that are coming back into your life. That's how it works. Every single time. 500 people were interviewed, and this is what I got out of that book. Okay? So you guys want to know how to do what I do. You want to do whatever you want to do. Hopefully it's not what I do, because I'm already taken. You got to do what you're here to do. Um, this is how to do it. So thank you guys for hopping on. I will see you guys on my next video. Oh, if you're in the Jay-Z mentorship marketing, uh, or mentorship class in my group, Josh is going to go live on Thursday and he's going to talk about leads and traffic. So that's why I haven't done that because that's not my cup of tea. I build relationships one at a time. 
He's a master of leads and traffic. He's going to be talking about that in our next uh, video on Thursday. So thank you guys for hopping on, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.